All right, I'm the Flat Rate Master, and today we're talking wrenches. I know, fascinating subject, wrenches. Now, obviously, the big one, standard combination wrench. Open end, closed end, boxed end. Industry standard for auto repair. I think most technicians are going to start out with a set of these. Or they're going to start out with a set of gear wrenches. Now, question I get is, what do you start out with? That's a tough, tough question. One, I would not want to be without gear wrench style ratcheting wrenches. Why? Because they come in handy. Because a lot of times you can sit there and go in and get something off. But on the other side of it, that's a really big head. And a lot of times it will not fit in there. So it's a pick your poison kind of deal. So, I have both, I've used both, I've had both for a very long time. I mean, to give you an idea, this gear wrench, standard style, is probably from the initial release of them. I bought in early into gear wrench and haven't looked back. Now, what you buy is up to you. Now, standard wrenches you know i have snap on i have you know some mac stuff i've got old school craftsman even got some power bill but what's right for you as far as a combination wrench i can't tell you that i just can't i don't know how you work i don't know what kind of vehicles you're working on i don't know what your budget is you know, you've got options out there from old school Craftsman, Carlisle, SK, Milwaukee, Snap-on, Matco, Mac, Cornwell, etc., etc. One, you have to figure out what you like as far as the feel in the hand. Because that's a big thing when it comes to wrenches. If it hurts you, like I've had guys complain about the Mac, Knuckle savers, hated them, hated them, because they hurt. Now, I've heard the same complaint when it comes to snap-on, personal preference of what you like, how it like, how it you feels in your hand, and your budget. So, I can't tell you enough, don't skimp on wrenches, get the best you can afford, but make sure you get what you like as far as feel. Now, choosing gear wrench style over combination, if I had to default, I would say get, a com get straight combination wrenches over gear wrench simply because there's many cases where the gear wrench just will not fit. And even a snap-on or something like that will start rounding a faster over because it's that tight. We you put a box end on it, it immediately comes off. You've got the old school non-reversing gear wrench style, and then you've got the rever reversing style. Now, one has an offset, the other is straight. So, something to consider. One of the things I do not like about this, the non-reversible is you're doing a faster, and all of a sudden you get a little too far, you're kind of screwed. Been there, done that. Hopefully you realize before you're really in trouble. So what other wrenches are out there? Stubby wrenches. These can come in a really handy. Now no, you're not breaking loose something that's really stuck with a stubby wrench, but once you get it broke loose, it's a whole lot easier to go in with a stubby where you've got a lot more swing than a longer wrench. Well, we're getting into some specialty stuff. First off, we got to talk about zero offset. 
Snap-on came out with them a long time ago. They were awesome. I love my set. And they're still very useful to this day. Now, there's companies out there that offer a zero offset. On the other side, a ratcheting end, which just takes it up a little higher because that makes it even better. Um, I've got the gear wrench set. Does very well. I was using it today. Did great. I was basically hanging on a faster trying to get it to come loose. So they're pretty tough. Now then you've got ratcheting, flex head, wrenches. I reviewed the mountain set, set a couple weeks ago. I'll link it in the description. Great option. You know, comes in very handy. Of course, you've got flare nuts, hydraulic lines, brake lines. These are a requirement, especially if you're up north. Because a conventional wrench will probably round off a brake line or a power steering line. You know, if you've got any hope of, and a prayer of getting it off, it's going to be with a flare nut wrench. This is one, until I find something better, your, your snap-on is the way to go. It, they really are the best of the best. So, but flare nuts, you know... You're going to need them if you work on cars. Here's something for you old school guys. Distributor wrenches. I think this is the only one I still have. I don't know where it happened to the rest of mine. But specialty wrenches designed specifically for a purpose are important. If you've got a vehicle that needs a specialty wrench, get it. I know the late model 67 uh, Cummins have a wrench that basically is the turbo to do it is dang near impossible without that special wrench. So, you know, if you're working on a specific brand, certain models might look at specific wrenches for that application. I mean, you also have offset wrenches. I don't really use them much, but a lot of guys love them. So if you've got a use for it, it's a good tool for you. Double open-ended wrenches don't come in as handy as a combination wrench, but can come in really handy. Can come in really handy when you're grabbing a handful of wrenches to go try to get something off and you don't know exactly what size it is. Give you a lot of options with less carry. One more thing to buy if you want them. Now, something to think about when it comes to wrenches of all kinds. That is head thickness. One of the reasons why I bought the Ghidorah set was the thinner head design. It gets into especially brake calipers where the snap-ons don't want to go on because they're just too thick. So something to consider when you're looking at wrenches. Some other specialty wrenches, brake bleeder screws, VIM brake bleeder wrenches. Comes in handy if you're doing a brake flush, bleeding brakes, get around the calipers, and, you know, another specialty wrench. Another one by VIM, surprising enough, ultra thin. Now these are when you really need low profile. Comes in handy, not as much as I'd like, but it's VIM, so they're pretty affordable. But they can come in handy, so another option out there. Now, we got to talk about the controversial crow's foot. It's a wrench, by the way. It's got wrench in the name. But a lot of guys will sit there and go, I've been wrenching for 20, 30 years, and I've never needed one. Okay. You can wrench for five minutes and need one. <laughs> when you need one, you really, really, really need one. So I've got gear wrench open-ended kit, and then I've got the snap-on crow's foot flare nuts. I know it's not one of those things, especially the snap-on set is expensive, 
but when you need them, you really, really need them. Now, some places you can get weather head style sockets in there and get them loose. There might be an option, nothing else, cutting torch and a really stubby wrench, maybe a pry bar, but crow's feet can really save your butt. Okay, now some categories I don't really have. And I don't want to get busted for copyright infringement, so I'm not going to put up pictures. Uh, half moon, S wrenches, etc. Uh, a, a lot of those are diesel guys' best friends. Now, I don't do a whole lot of diesel, so I don't have any. Nobody else in the shop does either. But, you know, diesel guys especially love those. That Cummins tool is kind of a semi half moon or something like that wrench. So maybe somebody can put a part number in the comments so people can see it. But if you need them, those are wrenches that you absolutely need. So I hope you like my overview of wrenches and why you should spend a whole lot of money on wrenches. If you do, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. Make sure and hit that bell notification so you get notified when I put out a new video. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Maybe you don't like shiny chrome. <laughs> Comments are always appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flyright Master.